Horror games are freaking expensive. I love collecting and playing horror games, but as a frugal collector, I sometimes find it hard to justify paying some of these prices. And I typically don't like to complain about prices, and I try to keep that stuff out of my videos. But like, just look at games like Rule of Rose or Kuan, or even something more popular like Silent Hill 3, the prices for these horror games are just ridiculous and prohibitively expensive for most people. But what if there is a cheaper alternative for collecting horror games? A library of horror games that uh, won't break the bank and are still super fun to play and super spooky. Welcome to Collector John talking about cheap uh, horror games on the Xbox 360 and maybe also the original Xbox uh, uh, video thing. Let's get into it. Yeah, so I've been collecting for the uh, Xbox 360 and original Xbox for a number of years now. This stack is too big. Way too big of a stack. And uh, yeah, I got this big stack of horror games here that I wanted to talk about today. Um, a lot of these games are, are still really cheap, and uh, you can just find them sitting around in game stores, because people don't really care about uh, collecting Xbox 360 horror games as much as they do for like the PS2 or the PS1. And uh, because of that, a lot of the prices for these games are still really low. But just because the prices are low doesn't mean these games aren't awesome. I think a lot of these games are still really fun, they hold up super well, and uh, they're freaking scary. Like, a lot of 7th gen horror games are super duper scary and freak me out. But yeah, let's just get right into it and start talking about some of these games. Alright, so starting off strong here, we have uh, Condemned and Condemned 2. Uh, these games are freaking awesome, and I've been playing the first Condemned, and it is just like... It's, it's a real freaky game. Uh, if you want to like hang out in a sewer and kill tweakers with a pipe, uh, this is definitely the game for you. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, the vibes are amazing, and both of these games are still under $20, I think. Um, so these would be really good ones to pick up right now if you're looking for like a pretty unique horror experience. Uh, they're just like super immersive and freaky and fun to play. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend checking these out and putting them in the collection if you haven't already. Uh, I think they're pretty awesome and maybe a little underrated. Next up we got the Dead Space series. Uh, again, these are like not expensive at all. They're all like maybe around $10. And uh, you know, most people know, know about Dead Space, but um, these games are freaking classics. Uh, especially the first one. The first one's definitely my favorite. I think the atmosphere of these games is really incredible, especially at the time when they came out. Um, just the way that the ship looked and the lighting and like the aliens, all of that stuff was just so well designed and so freaky. Uh, and even the sound design. The sound design in these games is amazing as well. But yeah, obviously they put out a remake for the first Dead Space. I imagine they're probably going to remake the other ones as well. Um, but still, they're still really fun to go back to on the Xbox 360 if you're looking for more of a retro, nostalgic experience. Um, I think these are really fun to go back to still. And there were a lot of Resident Evil games that came out on the Xbox 360, and I think this was kind of a dark era for the Resident Evil series. Um, but I think Resident Evil 5 is still really fun. It's not as much of a horror game as like the earlier Resident Evil games, but I think it's still really fun to play and there's still horror elements to it. Um, as far as these other ones, these are the only two other Resident Evil games I have on the 360. Uh, Operation Rancoon City is not good, like that's not a very good game, I don't know why I even have it. Um, then Resident Evil 6 is kind of, I, I think some people like it, but to me it's kind of mid. But I do have this archive collection version that has all these other codes for different Resident Evil games you could download. I'm actually not sure if those work, I really need to go onto the Xbox Live store and try to download these. Um, but it does have a code for uh, Resident Evil 4 HD and Code Veronica HD. So this is like a pretty cool collection. They also put out a few Silent Hill games on the Xbox 360. Uh, this is the only one I have right now, which is Silent Hill Homecoming. I paid $18 for it at a game store in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And um, I, I know this isn't a lot of people's favorite Silent Hill game, but I still think it's really fun and it still captures those Silent Hill vibes uh, for a much cheaper price than like Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill 3 on the PS2. And then they also put out Downpour and uh, the Silent Hill HD collection on the Xbox 360. And all of these games are kind of in the $20 to $30 range. So they're not super expensive, they're still really fun. They'll probably end up appreciating in value at some point. So if you're interested in the series or just interested in horror games in general, now would be a good time to buy these on the 360. And then there's Alone in the Dark, which is kind of a weird one. I've played some of this and it definitely has like kind of a cinematic movie feel to it. It really reminds me of Heavy Rain, like kind of a lot. Um, I think the gameplay is like maybe a little more action oriented than Heavy Rain was. Um, but this is a pretty cool game and it's this is like a $5 game man like this game is not expensive at all And it definitely fits the bill of like a pretty cool horror game So something that's worth checking out. I think Ooh, this one's a classic We got Alan Wake if you've never played Alan Wake It's freaking incredible at the time This was an Xbox 360 exclusive and I just thought it was amazing I, I was in college when it came out and I thought it was so fun I grew up reading Stephen King books So seeing that influence in a video game was so so cool 
Uh, I've never really seen anything like that before in a video game. Even today, I don't think there's anything that really captures the essence of Stephen King in a video game as well as Alan Wake does. I think it's still like kind of first in its class when it comes to that. I have a couple of games here that are more like horror adjacent and maybe not pewter horror games, but I still feel like these are games that I would play around this time of year and it would still kind of fit that spooky Halloween vibe and I'd still have a lot of fun playing them. Uh, so Castlevania Lords of Shadow is one of them. Uh, this is like another maybe $15 to $20 game, maybe less than that. It might be more like $10. And it's basically a straight up like character action game. It's pretty influenced by the Devil May Cry series, I think. And they came out with two of them on the Xbox 360, which I'm pretty sure they're both uh, less expensive than their PS3 counterparts. And uh, yeah, they're just like kind of fun. You know, it has that Castlevania like dark castle spooky vampire vibe to it. And uh, I, I think these games are still really fun to play, even though I think at the time uh, people just weren't like super crazy about them. And they definitely don't hold a candle to like a classic Castlevania game. Um, but I think they're still really fun to play. There's another one that people in the horror space don't really talk about, but I, I've always found these games to be like super freaky and I think they definitely fit the bill of a horror game. Uh, so that's Metro 2033. I think this one specifically is like actually uh, like a pretty scary, disturbing game. I think Last Line and Exodus weren't quite on the same level as this one when it came to like kind of a spooky, freaky atmosphere. Uh, but I absolutely love this game. And the first time I played it was on PC, um, but this version is still pretty good. And it still looks really, really cool. Like I think the lighting effects in this game still hold up really well. And yeah, if you enjoy being in a horrible dark underworld, uh, killing like mutated animals with weird pneumatic uh, guns, then this is probably a good game for you. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we got Beautiful Katamari. Don't, I don't know. Don't know where that came from. Bioshock. Yeah, we've all heard of Bioshock. Again, this is another game that I don't feel like people really talk about it in terms of it being a horror game. Uh, but this game really scared the crap out of me when I played it. And I was like 14 or 15 when this came out. But like the opening sequence of this game really freaked me out. And uh, I think these games are still pretty spooky today. I think Bioshock, it, it probably crosses the line into being more of a first person shooter, but it does still have like some survival horror resource management stuff to it. And uh, again, they're just like pretty scary to play. And I picked up this Ultimate Rapture Edition collection a while ago for I think like maybe $10. So again, just really cheap games to pick up on the 360 and super spooky and fun to play around this time of year. All right, these are really good ones. We have the Fear games on the Xbox 360. These are maybe getting a little pricier in terms of Xbox 360 games. Some of them might be pushing $30, uh, especially Fear Files. I think that one is a little pricier, um, but it is just an expansion. So like if you want to just get Fear 1 and 2, uh, I don't have Fear 3, but there's also a Fear 3 on the Xbox 360. All of those are more in like the 10 to 20 dollar range i think and yeah these games are awesome they're made by monolith which is the same company that developed the condemned games and they are just super like fun first person shooters that also have like really nice horror vibes to them uh, i think they're a lot of fun to play and they still hold up today so if you haven't played fear on the xbox 360 you should check it out and this is my last uh, xbox 360 game here I, I definitely don't have every horror game on the xbox 360 i'm still kind of slowly collecting all of the ones that i want but i still feel really good about the horror games that i do have on this console and i think uh, it has a lot to offer in terms of horror games and i hope that maybe this video has helped you come to realize that because uh yeah i just feel like people talk about the ps1 and the ps2 so much when it comes to horror games but the Xbox 360 is cool too. And this last game is Prey, which again, another game that people might not consider a horror game, but I think this game is like pretty, pretty messed up. Uh, it's like the first couple hours, there's some like pretty horrific imagery in Prey. And uh, I think you could definitely count it as a horror game because of that. And yeah, I have the limited collector's edition here, which I I'm not exactly sure how much this goes for. I think it's like in the 25 to $30 range. But yeah, it's a really cool collector's edition and Prey is an awesome game. Uh, I think you would not be disappointed if you went into this kind of expecting some spooky vibes. Uh, I think it's really great and it holds up super well. All right, so that's my Xbox 360 stuff, but I also want to talk about the original Xbox. Hey, what's up guys? It's Future Collector John here. And I realized while I was editing this video that I completely forgot to mention the Dead Rising and Left 4 Dead series. If you're looking to get some good zombie horror going, uh, you really can't go wrong with either of these series. Uh, I think Left 4 Dead especially is just like really fun. Just a satisfying, therapeutic uh, zombie murder simulator. Uh, I don't know, I think it's a great time. And uh, these games, again, are just incredibly cheap. I think I picked up Left 4 Dead at a thrift store for like $2 and then Dead Rising looks like it got for $6 at Mega Media Exchange, so you really can't go wrong with these. But yeah, I just wanted to give these a shout out. I felt like kind of a moron for forgetting about them because they're freaking classics. Uh, but yeah, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled programming now with some cool original Xbox horror games. Let's get back into it, baby. Let's go! And I think the original Xbox is a 
console with a lot of uh, cheaper horror games. It might be a little more expensive than the 360, but um, a lot of these, if you compare them to like the PS2 versions of the same game, uh, they are pretty much just cheaper across the board than anything you'll find on the PS2. Um, so because of that, I just wanted to talk about some of the original Xbox horror games that I have. And we're going to start off with one that's a little on the pricier side, and that's Obscure. So I think I paid $70 for my copy last year, and it doesn't have the manual, unfortunately. So that's like definitely on the cheaper side for a copy of Obscure. A complete copy on the Xbox might run you up close to $100. But if you look at the prices for the PS2 version of this game, it is like almost $300 now. Like it's getting real crazy on the PS2. And uh, this game is awesome. I, I think people should be able to collect it and play it. I think it's really fun. And uh, I think the Xbox is a really good way to do that for a cheaper price. But yeah, this game has some really interesting ideas and it's super influenced by like teen horror movies. I honestly feel like this game was kind of influential to super massive games and what they're doing. Stuff like Until Dawn or The Quarry. Um, those games feel like they might have actually been heavily inspired by this game, where you just have like a group of teens that you're playing as and there's kind of this permadeath mechanic where if one of them dies, they're just dead and you can't play as them anymore. I think it was like a really cool and interesting game for the time and it's still really fun to go back to today. Uh, the vibes are pretty incredible, honestly. Next up we have Still Life. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this game ever. It's not an amazing game. I think at the time it was pretty much a bone standard like adventure game. It kind of reminds me of Siberia a little bit, but it does have really cool serial killer horror vibes. It feels very David Fincher inspired. And uh, this copy that I bought in one of my local game stores was $8. So not an expensive game. And if you're into that type of thing, like that whole David Fincher vibe, Seven and all that stuff, you'll probably still enjoy this game as something to check out. And we're gonna go straight from uh, David Fincher serial killer vibes to Grabbed by the Ghoulies. This game is an Xbox exclusive. I don't think you can play it on any other platforms. I don't think they ever did any remasters of it or anything like that. I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they have not remastered this. And this game was made by Rare. So it, it holds up really well. It's super fun to play. It's just kind of a fun, like arcadey, uh, it's not really a platformer, it's not really a character action game, I don't really know where I'd put it. I guess you could just call it like an action adventure game, uh, but it is pretty spooky, you know? You're just going around exploring this haunted mansion, uh, maybe some Luigi's Mansion vibes in there, I don't know. I don't really know what else to compare this to. But this game is really fun, it's a pretty cheap original Xbox game, you can pick it up for like, you know, 12 or 15 dollars. Yeah, it's just another spooky game that I would definitely recommend to most people. Doom 3 is definitely a horror game, and uh, the original Xbox version is pretty cheap to pick up. It is dark and spooky, you are walking around dark corridors with a flashlight, and you can't shoot and use the flashlight at the same time, and it is very tense and stressful to play. So if you're into that, uh, Doom 3 is really fun, the Xbox version is fun. There was an Xbox 360 version that came out and that's probably a better way to play this but I don't know something about like the griminess of playing this on the original Xbox is a lot of fun to me so I like this version of Doom 3 a lot. Ooh, next up we got The Thing which I still have I just realized I still have the price tag on this from when I bought it a few years ago. Uh, this was, when I bought it, it was $10 on the original Xbox. I think it goes for a little more than that now. This game is really fun and it has some really interesting mechanics. If you like the movie The Thing, which is one of my favorite horror movies, um, it's definitely worth checking out just to see how they translate like some of the aspects of how the thing works and how it infects people. You need to gain the trust of your companions so they don't think you're the thing. And then your companions can also turn into the thing. It's a whole the thing. But yeah, this is a super like interesting video game. It's, it's a little janky, but it's still just a really cool game. I feel like I've talked about Silent Hill 2 quite a bit already, but uh, I just wanted to point out uh, Silent Hill 2 and 4 on the original Xbox are much cheaper than the PS2 versions. I think both of those games run from like 30 to $50 and the PS2 versions are like almost $100 there's no version of Silent Hill 3 on the original Xbox, unfortunately, but these are both really good versions of uh, these games. Especially Silent Hill 2, it has like extra content on the disc. There's a whole extra scenario where you can play as Maria, and that's really cool, and it also looks better than the PS2 version, so if you want to collect Silent Hill games, the original Xbox is a great place to do that. Better than the PS2. I'm just gonna say it. This copy of Silent Hill 4 is terrible. We're just gonna pretend it's not all ripped up and destroyed. You didn't see that. Uh, this is a cool one, Cold Fear. I don't really hear people talk about this game that much either. Another game that came out on the Xbox and the PS2 and the Xbox version is a little cheaper. I don't think it's super expensive. I think it's like maybe in the $30 range. Uh, but yeah, this game's pretty cool. It's definitely like a Resident Evil 4 clone with just kind of a different setting. It takes place on a uh, ship kind of stranded at sea and it's like super cold and rainy and there's, uh, there's bad stuff on the ship and you gotta shoot your way out. I don't know, it's, it's fun. It's a fun, silly game. Another game that I don't really hear people talk about that often when it comes to horror games is Animusha. And uh, there was a version of Animusha that came out on the original Xbox called uh, Genma? Genma? Ge I'm gonna say Genma Animusha. 
that's definitely right. It was directed by Yoshiki Okamoto. I, I'm, I'm definitely saying that right too. Uh, but he worked on uh, Resident Evil 2 and Dino Crisis and some other horror games for Capcom, I think. Yeah, these games, they don't really have that same like traditional horror vibe of a Resident Evil um, but they, they feel very similar, and they are pretty freaky a lot of the time, so uh, I think these games are really fun and worth checking out, and this Xbox version is a really good version of Animusha that's like less than $10, I think. And it's Xbox 360 compatible, so that's cool. Here's another Castlevania game, Castlevania Curse of Darkness. Again, it definitely feels closer to like a Devil May Cry than it does to a traditional Castlevania game, uh, but they're super fun and super spooky and dark, and I don't know, I just, I think these games are fun. Dino Crisis 3, baby. Like Obscure, this is uh, one of the pricier original Xbox titles, but when it comes to pricier original Xbox titles, they're still only like 50 to $60. Like, I think I paid $55 for this copy of Dino Crisis 3. And this is certainly not a traditional horror game. They were trying to make it more of an action game, but it still had like those kind of old, janky horror game controls. Like this game pretty much straight up has tank controls. And I think if you like horror games, this is worth checking out just because it's interesting. Like they were trying to make it something different, but it still felt like this antiquated, like Resident Evil Dino Crisis formula was still in there. And uh, I don't know, I, I think it's a cool game. All right, I've got two more here. This is kind of a weird one, but it's Thief Deadly Shadows. Uh, this game only came out on the original Xbox and the PC. There was no PS2 version. And this game is definitely not a horror game any more than like Splinter Cell is a horror game. I think they play very similarly. Uh, however, I, I do feel I feel like the Thief series does just kind of have its roots in horror. Like these games straight up have levels where you just fight undead creatures and there's just like kind of a Victorian steampunk vibe to all of them. And I don't know, well I wouldn't put them next to like Silent Hill 2 or something as a horror game. I, I still, it still just has that vibe to me, I don't know. So I, I think these games are really fun to play. I think if you're looking for something a little different to play around spooky season, this is a really good one. And uh, I think I paid like $12 for this, so not an expensive game. And last but not least, I don't know why I saved this one for last, because it's it's okay, I don't know, but it's Dark Watch. <laughs> uh, another Capcom joint, another kind of horror adjacent game, not totally a horror game. But you know, you play as a vampire gunfighter and you're killing skeletons and werewolves and all this stuff. Uh, it's it's a pretty spooky game and it holds up really well. I think Dark Watch is still really fun to play. Uh, the original Xbox version, again, is cheaper than the PS2 version. So uh, yeah, I don't know. This game rocks, It's it's cool. All right, so those are my Xbox and Xbox 360 horror games. Uh, like I said, I'm still working on, you know, getting all of the horror games that I want for those consoles, but I'm pretty proud of, uh, of what I've accumulated here over the years. I think a lot of these games are really fun to play, and like I said, they're just cheap to pick up when you compare them to some of the, uh, the classic horror games that people always talk about. I think all of these games were cheaper than a copy of Silent Hill 2 for the PS2, and that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, let me know what some of your favorite horror games are on the Xbox 360 or the Xbox or whatever console you want to talk about. Give me a like and sub if you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Collector John. We'll see you guys in the next one.